business. His last fight, as you see, he was knocked out by Pedro Feliciano, but knocked out really not the operable word there. Meanwhile, Scotty Olsen, who has been busted up a little bit in recent fights too, and could get tested tonight, feels that this time he wins, he gets a title shot. They call Scotty Olsen a throwback. He can fight often against anyone, and he gives fight fans an honest effort in every minute of every bout. Well, they're right. As evidenced by this parade of performances, alliteration aside, Scotty is a bulldog. And that happens to be his nickname. While he wades through opponents, 20 to be exact, he's working toward a flyweight title match, perhaps with Dave McCauley. Or maybe he's headed to a rematch with Michael Carbajal and that boxing fan, Drew All along, he's been just that, the bulldog. And while he's been destroying the likes of Pedro Feliciano and Alicio Gomez, well, Lewis Curtis has been losing the bigger, talented fighters. So tonight, the Bulldog will need some super snarl, and alliteration aside, he'll have to be tough. So all those alliterations are aside, and here is Scotty Helson coming in behind Bruce Kamaus. Strauss has done a really nice job with Scotty. Scotty, one of the true good guys in the boxing business, and the guy who we talked to you earlier, he's going to be successful, he's going to be just fine, whether he really gets to his ultimate goal as a fighter or not, he'll be fine in life. And the thing that he's bringing to the ring that we've seen him bring in here on our show is a really good work ethic, and I think some excitement. He's always fun to watch, even about so much he uh, has his moments that aren't so good. And uh, you may wonder, why should anyone win this match? Well, if you should have to call it, Obviously, he cannot be looking past Lewis Curtis. I don't think that's happening. Negate Curtis's jab, and not only do that, what he should do more often, and what he does do well when he does it, jab and his own, use his own jab. Curtis must use the ring. He's not a runner, but he's got to show Scotty some movement. And don't stop punching. He must. If you're going to beat Olsen, you have got to be active. All right, let's talk about the rules of the USBA rules, just a little bit different than those that we showed you a moment ago for the state of the bat. There is no three knockdown rule here, and no standing eight count. So uh, neither are in effect, and those are the main points, and the ten point must remains the same. The three judges, the fighter can be saved by the bell in the last round only. What that left then is to get on with it, and to be the fighters, there's Michael Hoffman. Michael? Ladies and gentlemen, Top Rank Incorporated in association with the undisputed, undefeated King of Beer, Budweiser present the featured bout of the evening. This bout is sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission, Chairman Luther Mack, Commissioners Dr. Elias Donham, Dr. James May, Bruce Lane, and Nat Carasali, Executive Director Chuck Maker. Representing the United States Boxing Association ringside as Supervisor Robert W. Lee Jr. The judges scoring this bout, Dalby Shirley, Al Siciliano, and Chuck Jampa. Positions in attendance, Dr. Flip Omansky and Dr. William Litter. The timekeeper, Al Bison, and counting for the knockdown seconds, James Cabin. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the Hacienda Hotel and Casino here in Las Vegas, Nevada, uh, let's get ready to rumble! For the USBA Flyweight Championship, the referee for this contest is Richard Steele. Introducing first, fighting out of the corner, wearing the white trunk with red letters and weighing in at 110 and one half pounds from our nation's capital, Washington, D.C. He brings a professional record of 14 victories with six KOs against five defeats and one draw. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome the challenger, Lewis Curtis. And across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the red trunks with silver trim, weighing 111 and one half pounds. Originally from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, now living and fighting in Las Vegas, Nevada. This 1988 Olympian has a professional record of 20 and 0 with 16 KOs, and he's ranked number three in the world by the WBO. Ladies and gentlemen, the USBA flyweight champion, the undefeated Scotty. Fighters in the dress room, I'm caution again, obey my commands at all times. Shake hands and good luck. So there's a look at Lewis Curtis, a lot of experience here, and 
You have the idea that this could be a pretty good test for Scotty Olsen tonight. Scotty figures I beat this guy, they really can't deny me a title shot. And I think that's probably a fair statement. He would like very much to get Dave McCauley, the IBF champion, and we'll talk a little bit more about the champions in the race weight division a little bit later. Look at the knockout percentages here. Curtis, not a guy who's quick to get you out of there, or get you out of there at all for that matter, but also on the other hand is. And part of that has to do with who he's fought, which has been the, uh, the higher weight fighters. This is a match fraught with danger for both men in terms of heads banging together. With Olsen style, with the fact that Olsen tends to cut, Curtis tends to swell, if those heads get banging in there, either man can have a problem. Yeah, that is a real problem. And that is something Scotty Olsen has to be aware of. Even in his wins recently, he is a little puffy around the eyes. He also cut the ring up. Look at how deft he is at. Curtis is a very crafty, tough guy, but look at Olsen. Good move. See, so trying to cut the ring up on him. He has the move. You see young man who's been taught the right way. He's keeping Curtis. On the side of the ring, he wants. They're working hard on Olsen's defense, and Luce Curtis will test it, because he will throw people in front of him. Right now, the Olsen is not going to get off. Look at the inside of the jab of Curtis. Blocking those punches, working on the inside, and when he gets a chance, really railing with the hook as he hit there. Very good. So that did that one on cue, didn't it? <laughs> Very good shot. So far, Olsen. Okay. Who is this fight fighting a textbook fight? <laughs> When he throws that good jab out, Scotty Olsen can come with a big right hand. And Lewis Curtis is cut somewhere. I believe it's over the right eye. And I think it was a left hand a few moments ago that caused the cut. Yeah, I don't think it was a clash of heads. No, I don't either. This is the classic first round Scotty Olsen wanted. He could not have scripted this any better. And part of it is what he's doing, not what Curtis is failing to do. To see exactly where that cut is, I can't tell. It's a little bit of blood on Curtis's face, but I'm not sure where it got is from. Another good left hand by Olsen. Scotty Olsen is throwing punches. He punches with tremendous leverage and having I mean, intention to get his man out of there with every shot he's got. He gets Curtis to move when he faints, Barry. You talk, though, about the danger of the clash of heads, and they've come extremely close on several occasions here in this first round. Now we're to the end of the first round, and it was really an excellent first three minutes of boxing from Scotty Olsen. We'll be back. Squaw Valley USA, your local Ford dealer, invite you to go for the gold. Gold medal skiing at Squaw, and gold medal values at your Ford dealer. Ford Explorers, the official 4x4 of Squaw Valley, and the leader in its class. With more room than the competition, enough for all your gear. Now get over $1,900 in option savings on Explorers Ford. That's a gold medal value. See Squaw Valley, see your Ford dealer, and prepare to be impressed. Ever think you'd hear about furniture stores that uh, plant trees to replenish the forest? Well, there's a fresh new idea for furniture called Woodworks. Woodworks outlets are wall-to-wall -wall wood furniture for every room you live in. A kind of volume that guarantees savings and real value every day. Plus, your purchase in here helps us replant 50,000 trees out here. Woodworks, the fresh new idea for furniture you're going to like, especially Money. Here's what the jab does for Scotty Olsen. Look at that. He gets the nail with the right hand because he put that jab out there. Again, it didn't land, but it was set up the right. Possible, possible that the laces of uh, Scotty Olsen created a cut. Yeah, and you know, that's really a pretty good chance of that because looking at the cut in the corner, it is almost like a scratch rather than a cut. Or scrape, perhaps a better way to describe it than a cut. We talked about the fact that Curtis was a guy who lives and dies by the jab. And you look at the numbers in the first round. Well, here's the total punches. And uh, only one of those eight punches landed by Curtis was a jab, and uh, ten for Olsen were jabs. So 
it, it shows you when Scotty Olsen jabs, he's so much more effective. And also, it is more what Olsen did than what Curtis did in the first round. Olsen just didn't allow him to get that jab off, because it's just like he is now, it's just inside the jab. Scotty Olsen told us that he wanted to work on the jab, he wanted to do more with the jab. In fact, he's been telling us that for his last four or five fights. And so far, that is really in evidence. Yeah, he's using it to work his way in. You know, he uh, limited Curtis to a very small percentage landed. The last time against Pedro Feliciano, the only time in concubine history of doing RAS there was a shot. Feliciano landed zero out of 16 punches in one round, round five. So Scotty's defense not as suspect as some people think. And everybody was so quick to write him off when he got hurt by Andrew Howard and Solis. They thought, oh, he's not going to be able to deal with it. You know, he's going to be the top guy. There was a class in there. Scotty made some suggestions to the crowd. He's becoming a showman. This is going to sound a little esoteric, but there, there's a look in Scotty Olsen's eye that was there the last time against Pedro Feliciano, and it's there tonight that tells me he does not want to lose it. What he said to us at the weigh-in today, when he told us, he said, you know, if that's true, when I walked in that ring and saw that USBA belt around Pedro Feliciano's waist, he said, I said to myself, I'm leaving with that belt. He's not. Yeah, he's really all, an all-business type of guy. Joe Curtis in the rush. I'm not sure if Curtis just got tangled up or that was from a punch. He has made it impossible for Curtis to do business. His defense has been great. Just look, Curtis is throwing some shots. He just can't find a way to hit him. It's the best performance so far, period, of Scotty Olsen's career. He's a defense, the best fighter, and he, technique wise, it's the best. And you know, they said today, Sometimes when you're against a guy that does things right, like Curtis, you did better. Yeah, they looked at just a moment ago, just in that last sequence there, Olsen blocked two shots in the body by Curtis with his elbows. And that's something you just wouldn't have seen from Scotty Olsen, even two or three fights ago. It's obvious of what he's been working on. So Richie Sandoval's done a very nice job with him. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we noticed that. We noticed that double hook, all right? Off the jab, hook, hook up, and then hook down, okay? He's going to fall for that. He is. You throw the double hook. The hook on top, and then the hook on the body. And then you roll the line, come back with that one hand, right? Okay. Yeah, that's the hook. 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 Don't get tight. Don't get tense. Don't get tight, don't get tense, okay? Relax. You're doing well. Okay, champ? Go. Wonderful work in the corner by Richie Sandoval. And it's possible that there was a clash of heads in there. He created the... Uh, oh, there's Scotty Olsen pointing to his eye where he feels like maybe he got blasted in the head, but the, no serious damage there. And Richie Sandler was saying, don't get tight, don't get tense, and I have a feeling that Richie was probably more tight and more tense than Scotty. Yeah, it's positive. Good advice for them to throw the double left and come back with the right hand. And what Richie Sandoval does, and of course we might mention to people if they don't know Richie Sandoval, former family champion, a terrific fighter, who beat one of the greats in Jeff Chandler to win that championship. He uh, he's a very good trainer because he gives short, concise advice in the corner. He's a short, concise guy. There you, there you are. You see the total jabs now. Scotty Olsen landing 50% of his jabs. And when Scotty Olsen lands 50% of his jabs, you can forget about beating him. When he throws 44 jabs, you can almost forget about beating him. There it is again. Yeah, exactly. And there it was again, just as you spoke there. The jab that set up a right hand. And he's landing some, some very good shots. This is a very impressive performance for him. Now it's interesting how I work. Taking the task pretty good by a guy who, in my opinion, I really respect Jack Fisk at the San Francisco Conference for saying that Scotty Olsen should get a title shot. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to stand on that. Absolutely, why not? Buddy? He's a good fighter, and anybody that says he isn't is wrong. And he beat a guy, even though he didn't have a good record, who was in there and went the distance with the champion. You say whatever you want. Uh, he keeps beating guys that give Dave McCauley a tough time. Why shouldn't he be, have a chance against Dave McCauley? And why shouldn't he end up beating Dave McCauley? I'm not saying he's definitely going to, but all these guys... Is, is doing 
some of what he needs to do to win. He's just not landing those shots. Little body shot by Scotty Olson, the whole package. 
school. And I believe it was Curtis himself who said, I've had enough. Richard Steele walked in the corner and walked away and waved the fight off. I don't believe it was Stuart Steele. It was probably the doctor who said that's enough. You've taken enough of a beating and he certainly did do that. He was hit with lots of punches. The fact that he didn't go down, uh, as we learned for sure, that the doctor did stop this. Probably after an exam, looking at Curtis and realizing that maybe there wasn't a lot of fire for him to come out again. You don't always have to go down six times to be punished in the fight. He was punished. Lewis Curtis is a tough man. Doesn't go down easily. And um, he didn't go down, but he was he beat in this fight. I don't think there's any question about it. Likely did not put around. And let's go up to the center of the ring now, Michael Buffer, with the official decision. Michael? Ladies and gentlemen, referee Richard Steele, after conferring with ringside physician Dr. Flip Omansky, it was decided that Lewis Curtis, the challenger, was unable to continue. The end comes at the end of the fifth round. The winner by TKO is record now 21-0 and still undefeated USDA flyweight champion, Scotty Bulldog Olson. Well, Scotty Olson in an unquestionable performance is a winner over Lewis Curtis and takes another step toward what he hopes will be his chance at a title. Well, the performance was a lot of fire as well. We've got more. Don't you dare go and 